Hi all, Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we are taking a look at this control panel from a Philips Medio 50 CPH X-ray system. Now this is a pretty huge system, came in a total uh, full-size 9 inch rack. Could unfortunately not take it with me, but was also SCR based, so was rather old power electronics, but I have to leave it behind due to the size of it. But I took the control panel. Let's check it out. What I did think was pretty nice was this control desk. And uh, I did manage to find a manual for it at uh, Frank's Hospital Service. Really great uh, website to find all kind of um, service manuals for old medical equipment. So let's try to turn it on. And I have to excuse uh, beforehand that this has an incredible loud buzzer because it actually has to warn you about a malfunction in the control panel of an X-ray operating system. So yeah, that's how it boots up. Of course, there is nothing connected to it. Uh, right now, I just have all the wires uh, flailing around out here on the side. It takes 40 volt DC, has its own very large power supply, um, which I peeked through the chassis, which we will see later. Yeah, we can just turn on all these uh, different uh, buttons here. And uh, there seems to be different uh, test patterns. I'm not uh, quite sure if this has any relevance. We can't turn it on or off, so um, not really anything there. Seems to be some kind of uh, lamp checks, uh, display checks that goes all around. We can turn uh, everything on here. And uh, what I really like about this system is this is the uh, normal push button, which corresponds to the remote control, which is also this uh, double action button here. We have the same one here, but there is this small secret panel, which can be pushed down, slid over, and we have a one to nine keypad. And with individual LEDs that can be tested as well. Pretty cute. The annoying things you can do with this is press this plus, which um, yeah test the buzzer and also the whole display. So uh, that's about as much as I can turn on at once. And let's just mute that. The funny thing is it's actually pulling almost one amp at 40 volt uh, DC. So. Uh, it's pulling quite a lot of power, but all this is also incandescent signal lamps. So once we turn all these on, we also pull quite a lot of power from the system. And of course, if I turn on the whole LCD up here, that also pulls quite a lot of current. But turns everything else out, then it turns it on again. Oh well, enough for the testing. Let's get this taken apart. That is really just plain old school, very nice, straightforward layout, everything in one direction, straight lines, 90 degree edges on your bends on the PCB tracks. The input voltage we have over here, which is a blue and purple over here, we have a huge power track going on along the edge here. And here we can also spot the manufacturing date, 1992. 1992, week 26, week 35, and I think also this crystal here says 1991, week 10. So we are in the early 90s with the design of this, which makes it a good 30 plus years from being manufactured. The power runs all along here, that's the 40 volt DC. Here we have 100 volt DC rated electronic capacitors, and we have a huge power supply here, which seems to be um, giving out two different voltages. All this over here is the internal housekeeping power supply design. We seem to have a single controller here, but there is two sets of transistors and really a custom job of um, yeah, making a hole into this heatsink for the thermal switch here. But we have uh, two inductors here and we have two separate parts of some um, output filtering. So I guess we're uh, making two different voltages out here. One thing to notice here is, is that 
all the ICs here, that comes from either Siemens or Philips. Or perhaps just uh, with a few uh, exceptions. But of course all the other smaller ICs over here, that's all different kinds of manufacturers. But if we go back to the middle here, here we have an old Siemens SAB 8085H82P controller. Runs at 5 MHz, 8-bit controller. So uh, that's a rather um, old uh, architecture. It's a pre uh, the x86 time, so uh, I'm actually not sure what it's even running. But next to it, it has this, which is a Philips SCN 2661 CC1N28. This is a programmable communications interface. Runs at uh, 50, and I say 50, to 19,200 baud. So the communications bus on this could be running pretty slow, but I think in the data sheet it says that if it's, uh, it's up to the clock cycle, how uh, the baud rate runs, and over here we have a 5.068 MHz crystal, which corresponds to this running at 19.2 kilobaud. So it's the maximum communication speed of this chip that the system is running on. Now the three large CalMOS CA82, C55A, dash 8 CP chips here, 40 pins, is programmable peripheral interfaces. And these three chips handles all input buttons and output to the um, display. And um, we can see up here the two large blue connectors that work connects out to the LCD display. And then we have over here what seems like a um, interlaced matrix connection to the uh, lamps that we have the rows here and then we have the columns here and it's controlled on and off cycle wise. That would explain why we only see so little output resistors but it would make sense to make it like that. And up here we have a lot of 5 watt resistors ranging differently from 150 to 75 to 3 to 1, 150 yeah, a wide variety of um, pretty large power resistors. There, there is absolutely no, um, yeah, no mystery why this is pulling so much current. Uh, these incandescent lamps and driving those is probably pulling a huge amount of current over here. And this is all one ohm, four watt resistors. It also seems to have two service buttons here. No descriptions, just S1, S2. Quite a nice collection of old chips that, if you Google them, you will find out that these are collectible ICs by now. So um, yeah, I'll probably keep this PCB around, just in case anybody in the comment section would say, why did you throw that away? I need that chip in my collection. There is not much to see at the back of the keypad, other than it's also just straight lined design. All goes over to a single header here, or pin header, which went up to the main board. And if we take a look at the keys here, all nice mechanical keys, but uh, there is absolutely no way of uh, reusing them, because they were all mounted in this metal plate before being soldered in place. So this is not coming apart. Now the keys itself is a small window where you can put your text into, and it goes down to a button and we have the small incandescent lamp next to it. The small radiation sign is unfortunately just a cutout in the front panel here. If we take a look at the LCD panel, we can see it consists of... Oh, hello mosquito! It consists of the well-known 8-segment LEDs. And we also have these very nice old-school uh, red green and yellow LED segments where this 2x2 is the one showing the radiation symbol. And it's also worth noticing the, that the phone symbol over here, that's put in a uh, angle position to get yeah, that phone handle lit up, so that's also at a slight angle. I hope you enjoyed this teardown of a 90s technology control disc of an X-ray system. 
and I will just uh, end this off with uh, the pictures of the whole system and I can only say that until next time, see ya.